Hot dog! Don't know what's inside of you. Hot dog! Go grab your ketchup and mustard and stick with us as we count down the top 10 untold truths of Nathan's Famous. Get your Nathan's hot dog. Step right up. Best on the boardwalk. A family business. This is a great place. Yeah, it's a dream of mine to be married here. Nathan's Famous first began as a nickel hot dog stand in Coney Island in 1916. It was started by Nathan Handworker, who the business is named after, and his wife, Ida. It was Ida's grandmother who created the secret spice recipe that gives the hot dogs their signature flavor. I hereby crown you queen of the hot dogs. Thank you. With a loan of $300, the first Nathan's Famous was opened at the corner of Surf and Stillwell, where today their annual hot dog eating contest takes place. The expansion was later overseen seen by Nathan's two sons, Murray and Saul. Unfortunately, they didn't see eye to eye on how to run the business, and Saul left Nathan's famous to start his own hot dog shop in 1963. Nathan took the conflict between his sons hard and passed away in 1974, never seeing them reconcile. They couldn't just say hello? <laughs> Murray continued to run affairs at Nathan's, opening a second branch a couple of years later on Long Beach Road, and a third in Yonkers a little after that. Business was through Driving, and Murray was eventually named president of the company in 1968, the year it went public. All locations were then sold to a group of private investors in 1987, and Nathan's Famous was franchised. Fourth of July hot dog eating contests. You're embarrassing! You're embarrassing your son! He is killing you! In case you didn't already know, every year on July 4th, Nathan's hosts an annual hot dog eating contest. Rumor has it that the very first one was held on Independence Day in 1916, when four immigrants decided to settle an argument over who was the most patriotic. The winner scarfed down 13 hot dogs in 12 minutes. There's a bit of a weird debate about this story, because in 2010, promoter Mortimer Motts admitted to making up the story in the 70s to create publicity for Nathan's Famous. I guess I'm lucky it wasn't hot chili day today. <laughs> Nathan's was quick to shut down this claim, calling Mott's a liar and saying that he never even worked for them. Regardless of its origins, today, Joey Chestnut is the reigning champion of Nathan's famous annual hot dog eating contest for his record of 75 hot dogs in 10 minutes. Turns out Nathan's famous hot dog eating contest is actually pretty famous. Every year it draws in over a million viewers. Unsurprisingly, watching somebody inhale 75 hot dogs in mere minutes is quite the show. In terms of a live audience, Coney Island draws in about 30,000 to 40,000 people to watch the whole thing go down. Around 1,700 hot dogs are prepared for the contest, but that's nothing compared to the thousands of hot dogs they sell to spectators at the event. There ain't a better hot dog in America. Hot Dog Contest Stars I was going for 75. I always love to get a new record. As far as hot dog eating goes, Joey Chestnut is a pretty big deal. Since 2007, he's won the Mustard Yellow Belt, the highest prize at Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Competition, 13 times. He holds the most titles and the current record. In 2020, he beat his own record, surpassing the 74 hot dogs he downed in 2018. Joey Chestnut is actually ranked the number one competitive eater in the world. He briefly lost his title of hot dog champion to Matt Stoney in 2015, who beat him 62 hot dogs to 60, but quickly regained it the following year and has been on a winning streak ever since. I eat success for breakfast. 2011 marked the first all-women's contest, aside from a special contest hosted in 1975 on Memorial Day, where a 19-year-old Brooklyn College student, Martha Rosenblum, won. Sonia Thomas took the win in 2011 with 40 hot dogs. In case you're wondering how these numbers are even possible, there are actually a few different methods professional eaters use. One is called the Solomon Method, created by Takaru Kobayashi, which consists of breaking the hot dogs in half, eating both halves at once, and then the bun. Another more popular one is the dunking method, which sounds like what it is. Contestants dip the buns in water and squeeze them out to help it go down easier. Grossed out yet? Chris, you did it! You're a champion! And now you get your pick of the groupies. Murray Handworker played a big role. Happy birthday to me. I can't wait to eat. 
While Nathan's original stand did phenomenally well on its own, it's his son Murray who can be credited with the expansion of the brand. Although Murray had pretty much been raised behind the counter of the original store, it wasn't until after he returned from World War II in 1946 that he really began to get involved. He introduced shrimp and clams to the menu, as well as delicatessen items, despite his father's reservations. Don't bring me down! It must have turned out for the better, though, because Murray took over the family business in 1968. During this time, the younger hand worker helped his father's business grow outside of Coney Island with several company-owned restaurants, as well as multiple franchises. Have you seen what it's like out there, Murray? Under Murray's leadership, the company published its own cookbook and established a packaged hot dog business, which went on to become a supermarket staple. Today, there are over 300 Nathan's Famous restaurants, and their hot dog line is sold in supermarkets across all 50 states. Celebrity patrons. Everything. Oh, yeah. God, you're like Josh O.G. here. <laughs> Over the years, many well-known people have enjoyed Nathan's hot dogs. The first of them was actually one of the men who convinced Nathan Handwerker to branch out on his own. That was none other than American actor, comedian, and singer Jimmy Durante. And Nathan's Famous has been popular among entertainers ever since. Cary Grant used to get the hot dogs for lunch when he worked on the Coney Island boardwalk before his rise to fame, presumably for their inexpensive price tag and great taste. Even notorious names like Al Capone and Bugsy Siegel were said to enjoy them. But Nathan's famous dogs weren't only popular with actors and gangsters, even Franklin D. Roosevelt was a fan. He served the hot dogs to Britain's King George VI and his wife, Queen Elizabeth, at an informal picnic in 1939. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. What better way to represent America's varying tastes than the good old-fashioned hot dog? Apparently, King George had never had one before, but liked it enough to ask for another. It's never too late for peace, love, and hot dogs. Winston Churchill and Joseph Stalin are also mention-worthy fans of Nathan's famous hot dogs, as well as the more modern-day star Barbara Streisand, who once had them shipped all the way to London for a dinner party. An imposter among us. Ethan hot dogs! This is not going to be good. Best hot dogs on the boardwalk! Although Nathan's didn't invent the hot dog, they're still pretty protective over their brand. Considering that Nathan's has been around for over a century and generates about $360 million annually, you can bet they didn't come here to play around. At least, not with cheaters. In 2018, a former employee, Samir Ibrahim, attempted to steal the brand's name. He was apparently fired for failure to meet company standards and decided to open up his own Manhattan hot dog cart not 13 blocks away from a real Nathan's Famous vendor. The kicker? It was called Nathan's Famous Hot Dog. Talk about original. I thought maybe you could use a late afternoon snack. Of course, the real Nathan's Famous didn't tolerate this, and soon after, Samir found himself in hot illegal water. The lawsuit claimed that he not only copied the name, but the presentation. Script lettering, green color, swirl underneath. Ibrahim was reportedly unbothered by the lawsuit, but did remove the lettering. And the truth shall set you free! They almost went belly up in the 80s. Nathan's Famous Hot Dog celebrated its 100th birthday this year, which is quite an achievement since their customers rarely make it to 50. There we go! Nathan's Famous continued on an upward trajectory from when it first opened in the 1970s, when the company's stocks peaked at $41 a share. Unfortunately, the market for hot dogs quickly grew stale, and in 1981, their stock fell to a mere $1. Handworker stood by his business, selling his tried-and-true hot dogs, and slowly sales went back up. In 1986, Nathan sold its 20 stores and packaged products business to investment firm Equicorp for $19 million. If you're feeling like a bit of a history buff and want to travel to the original Nathan's Famous Hot Dog Stand in Coney Island, there are four subway lines that can take you there. This wasn't the case when Nathan's first opened. In case you forgot just how old the restaurant is, Manhattanites had to take a rail car or steamboat to get out to Coney Island if they 
they wanted a hot dog in 1916. Have you ever had one before? A hot dog? Luckily, it wasn't too long after, in 1920, when the subway system was extended to Coney Island, which meant a lot more NYC business for Nathan's. The business was really booming at this time, with the stand selling a reported 75,000 hot dogs every weekend to visitors from out of town. I do a great impression of a hot dog. The recipe. What's in the box? There's nothing worse than a favorite food from your childhood tasting different than how you remember it. If you've been a longtime fan of Nathan's Famous, you'll know this is absolutely not the case with their hot dogs. It has remained relatively constant throughout the years, which means a Nathan's Famous hot dog today is going to taste just like it did a century ago. Apparently, the flavor is a pretty specific formula and super top secret. These dogs have a bit of a garlicky flavor flavor, which makes them relatively distinct from the usual taste of other hot dogs. The only change that has been made to the recipe is that it is now gluten-free, which was miraculously accomplished without altering the original flavor. Although no one knows much about the secret spices used, we do know that it all comes together in the company's Cincinnati plant. So what are we seeing here? Some at-home recipes call for onion, ketchup, garlic, chili powder, salt, black pepper, cumin, celery salt, and cayenne pepper, but you can decide for yourself how authentic it tastes. If there's one place to go for real, old-fashioned style hot dogs, it's Nathan's Famous. Go ahead there, folks! Pick yourself up a couple of dogs! Frog's legs, anyone? Frog a dog, huh? They've also got a few oddities on the Coney Island locations menu, one of them being frog's legs. Apparently, Nathan's has been serving them since 1958, and they've been popular enough to keep around on the menu ever since. According to a manager, the business sells around a thousand of them every month. They're sold in batches of four or six for $7.99 and $10.99, respectively. They are a delicacy, after all, and can be enjoyed with tartar sauce and lemon. Are you sure they're real? Lemons. Yes. Apparently, people actually go to Nathan's Famous specifically seeking out the frog's legs. The general consensus is that they taste like chicken, but some reviews claim they taste more like fish. They are battered and deep-fried and have to be broken apart like a wishbone to eat. You're welcome for that visual. Once they're broken apart, though, they do resemble slender drumsticks, so you can pretend you're eating chicken. Well, maybe they couldn't figure out what to make chicken taste like, which is why chicken tastes like everything. And if frogs legs aren't your thing, no worries. The chain also serves other water-inhabiting meals such as fish and clams, both of which you can get in a sandwich or as a fish and chips meal. There's also shrimp and chips and a seafood combo. The Stuffed Whale Incident Do you like seafood? I know a good seafood place. This unfortunate stunt was pulled in 1954 when Nathan Handworker was on vacation in Miami and left his son Murray in charge of running the store. During this time, Murray was a approached by Leif Sagard, a stranger who had somehow acquired an embalmed finback whale. Sagard offered the whale to the younger hand worker to include as an attraction that would hopefully draw customers to his stand. Who knows why Murray thought this was a good idea, but he accepted the offer, and soon there was a 75-foot-long, 70-ton dead whale next to his hot dog place. Of course, this was bound to draw attention from people. Unfortunately, it wasn't the right kind. People were pretty grossed out by the stuffed whale, and an inopportune heat wave caused the whale to rot and stink horribly. Well, people avoided Nathan's Famous the way you would avoid a 70-ton rotting whale, and the whale had to be disposed of. In Murray's defense, he was still learning the tricks of the trade. Yes, you could say it took guts to do that. Tis no man. Tis a remorseless eating machine. Arr. Sorry, too far. This actually wasn't the first marketing ploy pulled by the restaurant. When Nathan's first opened, Handworker priced his hot dogs lower than other hot dogs vendors, which led people to believe they must be of lower quality, or worse, not up to health codes. In order to combat this perception, Nathan hired men wearing white jackets to eat hot dogs in front of his stand to draw in higher-class customers. People assumed that if doctors were eating them, then they must be good. You did it, Dad! You saved us! I'm proud you're my father. Go away. Eating. We've got more. Just tap or click for another great video. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell.